Hey there, Jake Dempsey, CEO and co-founder of Project Broadcast. In this video, we'll talk a bit about custom fields in Project Broadcast. We realize that every business is different and the data that you like to maintain for your context may be different than some other user in Project Broadcast because your business needs are different. Because of that, Project Broadcast provides you with up to 50 custom fields that you get to decide how they operate and what they refer to in the platform. I'm going to jump right into Project Broadcast for us to take a look. Now, before I do that, remember, you can always visit training.projectbroadcast.com for additional training on various features in Project Broadcast, including custom fields. And if you need support, you can always email us at support at projectbroadcast.com. If you have a question about setting up your account or how certain features work like custom fields, feel free to reach out to us. All right, let's hop over into Project Broadcast and take a look at the Project Broadcast system. By default, when you look at a contact and you go to create a contact, we have a just a few fields that are kind of what we consider structured fields. First name, last name, company, phone number, and email. Now, you may have different business needs that require you to capture and maintain other information on your contact that provides additional value to you and your business. If you go to your settings area in Project Broadcast by clicking the arrow and going to settings, you have this area called custom field names. There are two types of custom fields. One is called contact fields. These are the custom fields of data that you want to capture on a contact in Project Broadcast. So let's just use an example. Let's pretend I've got a uh, e-commerce store and every customer in my e-commerce store has a special ID and we call it the customer ID. Well, maybe I want to store that in Project Broadcast anytime I create a contact or import a contact into Project Broadcast. So I can rename this custom one to customer ID. And I'm just going to click save. Now, anywhere I create contacts in Project Broadcast or edit contacts, I now will have the ability to set a customer ID field. So let's go create a contact and take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to create another dummy contact. So we'll create the contact. And when we create the contact, you'll notice there's an area here for custom fields. If I click edit here, I'll get a list of all 50 custom fields. But notice this doesn't say custom one anymore. It says customer ID. So let's just put a fake customer ID in here. ABC123. Anywhere I'm using that contact, I also now have access to the custom data on that contact. In this case, the customer ID. And I can use that and insert it into messages if I want to. So let's pretend I was scheduling a broadcast. If I was scheduling a broadcast and I inserted some dynamic content like their first name, I'll insert the contact's first name. Hope you're doing well. Uh, your customer ID is. And notice when I go click to insert dynamic fields now and I scroll through the contact, watch what shows up the customer ID shows up. It is the custom one field and I've labeled it customer ID. So I can always use any of the 50 custom fields that I've created and imported or added manually to my contacts in my messaging. Now there's a ton of different things you may wanna keep in the custom fields. Maybe you wanna keep their address information or maybe their favorite product or the last time they ordered. There's a tons of, da you know, tons of data elements that you might look at in your specific business and say, hey, this particular piece of information is important to me as it relates to my contact, and I want to store that in Project Broadcast. Custom fields are just a way for you to accomplish that. Now, we're going to go look at the other type of custom fields. I'm going to go back to settings, go to my custom field names. If I look at the user fields area, you have 20 user fields. Now, these are fields that are really like specific to you, the user of Project Broadcast. So for me, let's pretend I have an e-commerce store and I, I don't ever want to just type that link over and over and over again. I may create a custom field on the user and I'm going to call it um, e-commerce store link. That's what I want my uh, custom field to be called. And then on my account, I can go to user custom fields, and I can now go set all those values. I've named them in the settings, but this is where I go set the values. And maybe this is my you know, www. 
jakesstore.com. That's obviously not a real URL, but let's just pretend that's my e-commerce store link. So instead of me like typing this link out in every single message, uh, I'll go back into the schedule and we can just play with you know the message composer there. When I insert dynamic fields, we've already seen on the contact, my custom field shows up. But now if I go to the user, because I've declared user custom fields, and one of them was my e-commerce store link, well, I can insert that e-commerce store link just like I can any other dynamic field. So again, you get 50 custom fields on the contact. You can name them whenever you want. And whenever you import into Project Broadcast or create contacts manually or edit contacts manually, you can control what data goes into those custom fields and then use it in your messaging via the dynamic fields. You can do the same thing on the user and you get 20 custom fields that you can define on the user in your account settings area and then define their values. So maybe it's your e-commerce store link or or maybe you want to have like a very special signature. That's another good example. Let me go back to, let me go back to my user custom fields uh, names and I'm gonna call this one on user fields. Let's just call this my signature. Well, I can now go to my account settings, go to my user custom fields and I'm gonna call my signature dash Jake with project broadcast. I can save that. And now anywhere I want, I can include my signature in the message composer. So again, I'm gonna do it on the schedule. Remember message composer is the same, whether it's in a schedule, keyword campaign or chat message. Well, in my message composer now, if I go to insert a dynamic field and go to the user area, you'll notice there's my signature. So if I inserted that, let's, you know, let's do it in chat. That way you can see the message actually happened. So I'm gonna create a new contact And again, you can do this anywhere you see the message composer. I'm just going to do it in chat so you can see it quickly. But if I were to insert a dynamic field and I'm going to insert that signature that we set as dash Jake with Project Broadcast. Um, oh, I've still got double opted in turned on from a previous video. Let's go and turn that off real quick. Apologize about that. So now let's try to send that message again. And you'll notice it inserted dash Jake with Project Broadcast. So I can store data in the user custom fields that's important about me, the user of Project Broadcast, and then insert that content via a dynamic field. And I also have 50 custom fields that I can control what they are in terms of what they're called for my contacts to store additional information about my contacts. And the whole point of this, you know, this feature is so that you get to control what data is stored on your contacts because again, every business is different and your business may have slightly different needs than another business. Always remember, you can go to training.projectbroadcast.com for additional detailed training about each of our features, including custom fields. And if you have questions, make sure to shoot us an email at support at projectbroadcast.com.